What if I told you that God and the devil made a podcast? It's harmless phosphorescence. Hello, everyone. This is Thoreau Smiley, and my superpower is Latin. Who's joining me this week? I'm Josh CC, and I'm rude wherever I am. I'm Brian Lesh, and whoa, but this time in hell. <laughs> I'm Alaric Weber, and I'm the one soul Satan would come up here to collect himself. And this is Harmless Phosphorescence. It's the podcast where we watch every theatrically released full-length live-action superhero movie ever made. We gather some research into the production and the source material, and then we tell you about it. Um, this show is brought to you by our patrons. Patrons like executive producers Michael Beck with an Atticus Burkett, and you can be a patron too. Just go to patreon.com slash harmless entertainment. Got a lot of bonus content there. We've got a Star Wars miniseries, some uh, holiday shows, um, a couple music uh, shows on there, uh, the weekly American Top Four, and we've got some uh, bonus uh, spooky movie shows coming this month, courtesy of uh, Josh and Andrea, who brought you our Christmas movies last year. Um, mm-hmm. And that reminds me, for just a dollar, you can get our monthly movie, a buck and you get access to all of our past monthly movies inclu- and all upcoming monthly movies. We did, uh, what, we did Independence Day, Life of yeah. Brian. Demolition Man, Time Bandits. Right. And this month, October, we are going to be doing, the votes are in, guys. Oh. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. Yes. The Dream Warriors. I know it's funny to, to admit this. Because I've done it before, but that's what I voted for. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't vote for my own. That's a great choice. Shit. Uh, yeah. Do I? I've okay. So I've seen the first one. Do I have to watch the second one to understand what's going on in oh, the third? No. Oh no. To understand? No. <laughs> no. And in fact, I will tell you why you should never watch the second Nightmare on Elm Street in that podcast episode. All right. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. No. It's crazy. It's own. Two is crazy. And, yeah. and and just a little bit gay. <laughs> um, That's well. awesome. I'm into it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, however, this is not that podcast. This podcast is Harmless Phosphorescence. And this week, we are going to be watching Constantine. Mr. Constantine, I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know the circles you travel in, the occult exorcisms. Easy there, hero. That's Dragon's Breath. I thought you couldn't get it anymore. Oh, I, uh, I know a guy who knows a guy. I thought that you could at least point me in the right direction. Yeah, okay, sure. Please. What if I told you that God and the devil made a wager for the souls of all mankind? No direct contact with humans, that would be the rule. Just influence, see who would win. Demons stay in hell, angels in heaven. They call it the balance. I need to see what you see. You do this, there's no turning back. You see them, they see you, understand? Go to hell. Or, as I like to call it, John Wick and the Spear of Destiny, a parable about the dangers of illegal immigration and smoking. (laughs) This movie was released February 18th, 2005. It has a running time of 121 minutes, cost $100 million, took in 230.9. Didn't do bad there. Hmm, that Keanu might pay off. Yeah, this Keanu <laughs> feller. Uh, and uh, that means that it is time, gentlemen, to discuss oh, the yeah. box office top 10. <laughs> discuss. This. I love it. Uh, uh, yeah, same to it. So uh, this is the game where uh, the guys will try to guess where this opened in the uh, box office that week. And then... I will ca- I will uh, read off the box office mojo descriptions of each movie in the box office top 10, and the boys will try to guess what the movie is. Let's start off, uh, I don't know where, Brian, where do you think this opened? Uh, number two. <clears throat> Brian says two. Josh, what do you say? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it doubles its money, counter raise. But uh, three. Josh says three. Al. I was going to go with two, but... Um, and then I was thinking of going with three. I don't want to get too far away from two, so I'll go with one. Al says one. One, two, three. All Take right. Game. Here is the t- box office top 10 coming in at number 10. Single girl anxiety causes Cat Ellis to hire a male escort <laughs> to pose as her boyfriend at her sister's wedding. Her plan, an attempt to dupe her, dupe her ex-fiance who dumped her a couple years prior, proves to be her undoing. Single woman anxieties? Is that how that started? <laughs> Single girl anxiety. Jesus huh. Christ. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, any guesses? Uh, let's see. Hero, <laughs> that's, hero for hire. Oh, that's close. <laughs> not, not really, but like, anyone else want to guess? <laughs> no, I, I don't want to guess. <laughs> the wedding date. The okay. wedding date. Okay. Is this, Starring uh, Deborah Messing and no. Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever I'm sorry to interrupt but I love it so much did anybody ever see that Saturday Night Live sketch I think it was Charles Barkley was the host but it's uh, the whole it's a game show it's Keenan so, so it's three black guys and they have to they keep showing pictures of Dermot Mulroney and Dylan McDermott <laughs> <laughs> and they have to say which one is which Oh God! He's <laughs> just like I don't know, Moroni. Moroni. Uh, coming in at number nine. Um, when Rue sets off on his own into the Hundred Acre Wood, he discovers a friendly and playful friend. The Tigger movie? No. Huh. You <laughs> stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the piglet movie? <laughs> no, is there a piglet movie? <laughs> um, Brian? Who, who's drinking again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Brian was the closest. Oh, I forgot. Josh gets 10 points for uh, getting the wedding date wrong. Um, <laughs> it's called Pooh's Half a Lump Movie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That ranked? Holy shit, this has got to be a slow week. I bet you won. Last I bet week, you won, Al. Last week was at number five. The <laughs> Pooh's movie. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Once you've seen the Huffalump, there's no reason to go back. Uh, so Brian uh, gets 75 points. Sweet, I'm into it. For saying poo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming in at number eight, a biopic depicting... <laughs> That's what biopics do. <laughs> the yeah. early years of legendary director and aviator Howard Hughes. The aviator? Yes, mm-hmm. Al. You get one this... point. <laughs> yeah. You forgot the subtitle, though. A man with his jars of mini jars yeah. of pee. <laughs> There's room full of mini jars of pee. Uh, yeah. The man and his pee. <laughs> I know. They conveniently didn't portray the the most interesting part. Right. He lost his mind in the Las Vegas Hilton. Long fingernails and jars of piss. Everything's frozen over here. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah, right. Uh, Coming in at uh, number seven. A young man tries to deal with the childhood terror that has never stopped haunting him. Okay, now is this drama, horror, <laughs> or comedy? Or comedy. It's Constantine, isn't it? <laughs> is it? Uh-huh. It is not, but it could be. Based yeah, it on totally could be. It could also be Howard Hughes. <laughs> the aviator. Uh, yeah. Um, hmm. the, yeah, he's a kid. He's got some, some kid oh, problems. Oh, is, is it a child's play movie? No. no, that would still be in theaters. No, it's not. Um, it is horror. I'll give you that. It's right. horror, and based by the the poster, it stars a disembodied hand. 
Oh. oh. Idle Hands? Idle Hands? No, no, no. Oh, damn. Oh, no, um, that was meant... Yeah, okay. Um, that was a fun movie. Actually. Yeah. Um, I dock myself 75 points for giving misleading information. It's called Boogeyman. <laughs> Boogeyman. It's called Boogeyman. <laughs> it's about disco. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this goes super here. This just goes all it's all in the hands. Right. Uh <laughs> number six. Do you impress a foxy divorcee? <laughs> Ladies man Nick <laughs> offers to take her kids on an extended road trip. Oh Dark. this is this the Ice Cube movie? <laughs> All right. <laughs> One of the Ice Cube movies. Yeah. Are yes. we there yet? Yes, Brian nah, gets that's it. That's what it was called. Brian gets it. This man was once in NWA. <laughs> yeah, he's just yeah. <laughs> this, <laughs> this movie birthed so G-T-A. many teams too. Years later. To oh yeah. Movie. Yeah. Um there there's a there's sequels to this, right? Yeah. I think so. Is Are we a- there yet? Again. Yep. <laughs> Are we there yet? Well, or yet. similar. No, there's one that's like family where they're whitewater rafting, right? I think that's a sequel to this. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Was this uh, the movie where the, the word shark came from? Oh, or I don't know. Came, I, into, <laughs> came into popularity? I think this might be it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because I heard shark in 2004 from okay. there was a movie. <laughs> you with, have a very distinct memory. I do. I do. I remember what movie was it? It was, uh, I think it was. I think it might have been Shallow Hal. Huh. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, only you would know. I know. So. Yeah. If, I, I do. Re- I do recall the uh, the promos for this movie. Um, never saw the movie itself, but uh, the promos. The little girl was in the back seat. She's like, I think I sharted. Yeah, uh, I vaguely remember that now. Yeah. Well, thanks for opening that file cabinet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> It's weird the things we recall. No, I yes, it, yeah, it totally. I, is. I distinctly remember the first time I heard that. I wish I could remember which movie it was, <laughs> but I know it was 2004. The kid, there were a lot of poop jokes in that era. There was a movie <laughs> where a kid was like, "I'm prairie dogging it." I forget what movie oh, that was. God. They were like a Nazi museum <laughs> or something in the Midwest. Oh God, the holes. Ernest goes to Ohio or something. I Ernest goes, goes to Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we on our list? Number five, a determined woman works with a hardened trainer. Million I mean, this, dollar baby. Yes, Al, you lose oh, all your wow. points. <laughs> <laughs> a million of them? Your cumulative points that you've been <laughs> earning these last oh, weeks. No. You thought you had enough to win that leather jacket, but you don't. <laughs> I by the way at the end of the year if there's any left over I'll pay it out in camel cash. <laughs> That's what I'm you get a fucking sweet umbrella or something though, man. Something. Any Damn. Do you think they still redeem those camel points? <laughs> <laughs> I got a, got a bunch of cigarette boxes laying around. You can take them to one of those Bitcoin machines and then <laughs> <laughs> <Dump them. laughs> Do you say a Bitcoin machine? For Bitcoin to fucking camel bucks. <laughs> I built a, built a special uh, money bin to put all my camel cash in and swim around in it. <laughs> you lay in it like a tank. All right. Number, yeah. number four. An aspiring cartoonist finds himself in a predicament when his dog stumbles upon... A an important next artifact. Yeah. Yeah. Next week movie, right? Son S- of the Mask. Son of the Mask. And this is actually the first time we've had this where two movies opened the same week. So oh, why did we choose this one over the other one? Can you explain? Because I didn't want to watch Son of the Mask. <laughs> so I Just decided yet. to push it back as far as I could. So it didn't have anything to do with it being opening at number four and no. Constantine opening higher. <laughs> we can say it did. Well, let's say that it did. Yes, we'll say that. <laughs> we'll use that as a tiebreaker in the future because this may be an issue again. <laughs> yes, and as we get yeah, probably will. as we get yeah. closer, yeah, it will be an issue again. So, because uh, yeah. you may choose a movie over another movie, we should probably do the better one first and then suffer later. <laughs> right. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, but <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Uh. So, uh, also opening this week at number three. A mischievous dog befriends a lonely young girl in a new town and helps her make new friends. <laughs> oh, I think I know. This is this the Marmaduke it... movie? 
much. <laughs> yeah. Is it because of Win Dixie? It is because of Win Dixie that I'm telling you about this movie. <laughs> it is because it's a loop. Uh, Josh's points now transfer to Al. Um, <laughs> Get that jacket again. What's the exchange rate? Um, right. 12. Yeah. Is this a one to one transfer? <laughs> it's, the exchange rate is 12. Just I'm not, I'm not telling you. <laughs> In what direction? Well, you know how to do math. You'll figure it out. You'll get plenty of points out of this. Number Turn it into a win. Right. Number two. Supernatural exorcist and demonologist John Constantine I'm a helps a policewoman prove her sister's death was not a suicide, but something more. Brian wins getting one quarter of a point. Yeah. Straight to hell. Uh, so number two and the number one movie this week a movie I keep getting confused with another movie that we're going to do a little later a smooth talking man falls for a hardened columnist while helping a shy accountant woo a beautiful heiress this is a mess what Uh, single girl anxieties are probably involved (laughs) I don't this know. This is the human uh, centipede. I remember that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it stars. This is all just it, to woo that girl. It stars. Um, it stars royalty. Fresh royalty. Fresh royalty. Will Smith. I, oh, is this uh, Hutch? Hitch. 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 Yes. Hutch. <laughs> Guys, that just Hutch. put your IKEA furniture together for you. <laughs> He's uh, the best. The he, movie Hutch. God damn it. Hutch. Yeah, another, yeah. Yeah, this Back when I can't another move, produce movies. Another of those situations where it's just like, oh, that gorgeous woman loves Kevin James. Right. If only, if only he could wear his clothes better. Yeah, so Hitch, um, which did not open this week, beat out three movies that did. Well, it was uh, just after uh, Valentine's Day. Oh, that's true. Mm, that's true. People had to. What is what is the name of the Will Smith movie where he's a superhero who's like a drunk or something like that? Hitchcock. Hancock. No, Hancock. Hancock. Hitchcock. I keep getting I keep <laughs> getting Hancock. Hitch and Hancock Hancock mixed up. And, the titles uh, of which one is which? Yeah, <laughs> they're essentially the same movie. Kevin James plays a superhero. <laughs> Any <laughs> sidekick in both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is our box office top 10 which yeah. brings us to the uh characters <clears throat> in this movie called constantine al do you have something to tell us about that i sure do thanks for asking um, <laughs> he is really polite when he asks we just we just pulled his name out of a hat it was random <laughs> um uh, yes john constantine um, he was created by Alan Moore and Stephen R. Bissett. Mm. Um, this Alan Moore see. fellow's come up a few times. Yeah. Um, yeah. There were uh, several other names attached to the creation uh, by on a different uh, article. I stuck with two. Uh, <laughs> I didn't write down the rest. I bet, anyway, Len, we- I bet Len Wein's name came It was up. not. No. No? Hmm. No, not this time. I thought there were crossovers, Swamp Thing, and co- anyways. Proceed. Um, John Constantine, he first appeared in the Saga of the Swamp Thing, uh, number 37, uh, June of 1985. He was, uh, the character was drawn to resemble musical artist Sting. <laughs> um, John wow. Constantine would be a recurring character in Swamp Thing, acting as a supernatural advisor to the main character. He would eventually get his own comic book in January of 1988 titled Hellblazer, published by DC Comics. The, that title would move to Vertigo Comics upon Vertigo's establishment in 1993. Mm. The, char- the character would have a lead role in a handful of titles of varying names from 2013 to present. Um, con- they changed it to Constantine uh, when it went back to DC. Um, then Constantine the Hellblazer, then the Hellblazer, and now it has reverted again back to just <laughs> Hellblazer. Jonathan. Uh, Johnny boy. 
I <laughs> I remember him from Sandman. That's I the first place that yeah. I, I saw him I saw also. Him. Yeah. yeah, me Same. too. So um, then, quoting quoting Wikipedia, Constantine is a working class warlock, a cult detective, and con man from Liverpool who is stationed in London. Huh. He's he is known for his endless cynicism, deadpan snarking, ruthless cunning, and constant chain smoking. But he's also a passionate humanitarian, driven by a heartfelt desire to do some good in his life. <laughs> Visually, John Constantine is characterized as having blonde hair, wearing a trademark black suit with a red tie and a tan trench coat. John Constantine has been a member of the Justice League Dark, um, a team consisting After Dark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a team consisting of the more supernatural heroes of the DC universe. Um, originally, um, ma- uh, Madame Xanadu, Dead Man, Shade, and Zatanna were uh-huh. the uh, original team. And um, they went with Justice League Dark, uh, much to John's um, dismay. He wanted to call it the Constant Team. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Not uh, really. <laughs> oh, come on, Al. Um, John has had several appearances in the Sandman well one appearance in the Sandman Um, he's been in the books of magic uh, Lucifer Crisis on Infinite Earths and Brightest Day so he's he's jumped around appeared in several places Hellblazer was the longest running and most successful title under the Vertigo imprint um Concerning comic book character rankings, John Constantine ranked 29 in IGN's Top 100, number 10 in Wizards' Top 200, and number 3 in Empire's Top 50. Wow. Hey. Uh, Empire was a British publication, so maybe that's why they ranked him higher, because he's well, a British character. Uh, well, and, you know, everyone in the Empire is British, at least on the Death yeah. Star. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> Uh, the character's uh, been a, uh, highly influential in the modern occult fiction. Uh, he was, I guess, one of the, one of the early, early characters in what we call the, the modern occult era, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> he was portrayed by Matt Ryan for the single season of the NBC TV series, Constantine, uh, which I thought was pretty good, but it got canceled. Uh, Matt Ryan, though, would reprise his role on an episode of CW's Arrow before becoming a cast regular on Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, nice. Huh. Well, there you go. He's still working. Yeah. <laughs> this particular movie was loosely adapted from the six-issue story arc called Dangerous Habits, written by Garth Ennis in 1991. The story features John Constantine Damn. being diagnosed with terminal lung cancer and subsequently conning the Lords of Hell into curing it. Hmm. Uh, a couple more characters to fly through real quickly. Um, Chaz Chandler. Uh, we in the movie they called him Chaz Kramer because uh, <laughs> I don't know Chaz Chandler just wouldn't work out. Mm-hmm. Um, Jace it was uh, John Constantine's closest and longest surviving friend who acts <laughs> as John's. Sidekick and cab driver. He first appeared in Hellblazer number one back in January 1988. Hmm. The Archangel Gabriel. (laughs) A character in a few books. Yeah, a few books. Um, As far as uh, the comics, he appeared in the uh, Dangerous Habits story arc. Uh, Despite owing a debt to Constantine, Gabriel refuses to cure John's cancer. So John has Ellie the succubus seduce Gabriel and rip out his heart. (laughs) Wow. Now now tainted. (laughs) Ellie the succubus has single girl anxiety. Dames. (laughs) Ellie Uh, the succubus. (laughs) Now tainted in the eyes of God, Gabe's wings are torn out and he is exiled Mm. To Earth as a mortal. Um, speaking of Ellie, uh, she actually shows up in um, four deleted scenes uh, of the movie. Huh. Uh, 
uh, actress Michelle Monaghan. Hmm. Um, two of those, two of those deleted scenes had the exact same dialogue. They were just in different settings, so they <laughs> couldn't decide which one to use. And then they used neither. Huh. Uh, <laughs> those rascals. But um, one of the deleted scenes was an extra, um, uh, a lengthening of the the scene where all the um, the demons were just lurking around that room at the end. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, so we actually see the actress who played Ellie um, for about three seconds of screen time oh. uh, in, in the theatrical cut. She is the one who says, "Holy water!" Holy water! Yeah. Uh, uh. Hmm. Um, hmm. Yeah. So that was going to be Ellie. I recognized her. Hmm. Okay. It's all coming hmm. together. All right, Papa Midnight. A voter I hear, shaman. I, I hear he was a Rolling Stone. <laughs> really? I hear his pizzas are awesome. <laughs> but he's a little racist. Yeah, <laughs> they he's no longer night. affiliated with the pizza company. <laughs> they come at night mostly. Pop Midnight is a Vodun shaman and businessman who has lived since the American Revolution. He has <laughs> been a, a, a sometime ally and enemy of John Constantine. First appeared in Hellblazer number one. And Lucifer Morningstar. Oh, yes. Uh, was in the comics. This interpretation of The Fallen One was created by Neil Gaiman, first mm-hmm. appearing in The Sandman, Volume 2, Number 4, April of 1989. Well, it's interesting because um, Balthazar in this reminds me, well, I guess Gabriel too, but reminds me of Lucifer in The Kindly Ones. Yeah. Like the way they were drawn. Well, I mean, Lucifer... In Lucifer in the salmon very much reminds me of David Bowie. Yeah. yeah. That's what That's I always think of. It. Yeah, yeah. I think he was drawn to look exactly like Bowie. <laughs> I think so too. And I think wherever they generated this Tilda Swinton <laughs> creature, <laughs> right. they also used Bowie as a <laughs> Yeah. Tilda Swinton is just um David Bowie. Um grown, trans, grown trans David ribs. Bowie, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what she is. In the course of the Sandman series, Lucifer would abandon Hell to Lord Morpheus. Lucy would later get his own spin-off series depicting his adventures after abandoning Hell. Yes. <laughs> and um, Lucifer had his own show on Fox from 2016 to 18, which was picked up by Netflix in the following year, and uh, I think it's still going. It is. It's, uh, it's getting one more season. Yeah. It's now a Netflix original I, show. I watched the it's first fun. episode of it. it I is, liked it. It's it, is, it's, it was fun. It felt like um, a procedural with Lucifer in it. It was like law yeah. <laughs> law and order and hell. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. He's a, um, he's a consultant the to the LAPD. Uh, <laughs> one particular detective. Excuse me. I think he's um, trying to bed her the entire show too and i don't think yeah. the whole show the, the devil's striking out sometimes i uh <laughs> well because so the sandman is actually which begins filming in two weeks um what yep Whoa. sandman begins is, filming is it in two gonna weeks. be a show netflix series oh wow. holy crap they made a point of saying that it will not take place in the same universe as lucifer which is now a Netflix show based on huh. the character created okay. in the Sandman. So, um, oh, wow. so the Sandman series will have a different Lucifer in it than the one that is currently on Netflix. Well, that's good. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> It'd uh, be weird to make Sandman be saddled by that. The, yeah. Yeah. A procedural <laughs> satanic drama about the police <laughs> in LA. <laughs> Yeah. Where he runs, I'm be- I believe he runs a nightclub. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I just like Morpheus is just like. So wait a minute. You're telling me that this guy got a what's up up his hoo ha, and then got killed. <laughs> yeah. The same man's unloading boxes off a truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember. Her. <laughs> he was in here last night. He was the guy from all the Law and Orders that connected everything. Was it Lenny? Lenny's in there somewhere. Right. Somewhere. Yeah. He's just cleaning a bar, cleaning a single glass in a bar. Be like, yeah, I saw him. I remember him because he was really weird. <laughs> he had this thing about him. Something happened to her? <laughs> no, we're just the murder police. <laughs> uh, um, 
Lucifer. <laughs> uh, were, did you have any more characters, Al, to speak about? No, that was that was it. That rounded it out. That is it. All right. Thank you very much, Al. That does Thank bring you. us to the production of the film itself. This movie um, was in development as far back as 1997. Um Paul Hunter was attached to direct for a while. Um, then it went to Tarsum Singh for a bit. Um, it was actually slated to begin filming in 2002, directed by Tarsum Singh, starring Nicolas Cage. But then, uh-huh. then they both dropped out, and uh, it inspired dueling lawsuits, which eventually were settled around 2004. Um, and Keanu Reeves jumped in the role and and did it. I can't, it seems like they were never going for blonde and British <laughs> with nope. Nicholas Cage yeah. and Keanu Reeves. Yeah. They had no intention. And it looks like the Donners or at least, uh, Laura Schuler Donner was involved. Lauren Schuler Donner. Yes, that is correct. She was, uh, wow. she was producer. Yeah. I think this was another case of, we don't think a Brit or a team of Brits will go fly in the American, uh, film movie industry um like that's why we got tom sawyer in the league of extraordinary gentlemen right yeah yeah if so only, americans would watch if only america yeah. had some sort of appetite for like well-dressed smooth talking british guys who got in sort all sorts of globe trotting adventures <laughs> <laughs> just that one yeah um uh, this movie was directed by francis lawrence um who uh did a lot of music videos. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. He did a lot of music videos, actually. Many I've never heard of. Dear God, these are terrible. Um, <laughs> I Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> Girl's Best Friend, the Jay-Z one. Um, waiting for Tonight, J-Lo. Turn Your Lights Down Low, the Lauren Hill, Bob Marley one. Um Never be the same again by Melanie C. <laughs> wow. Um, how many licks, the little Kim? I'm like a bird, Nelly Furtado, Backstreet Boys. Um, oh my God, he just it just keeps going and going. So many of these things. His most recent, uh, well, his most recent one was the 2013 by Daughtry, but he did direct uh, Bad Romance, Lady Gaga. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, his uh, he directed. This is his first film, his first major motion picture. He did. He was an assistant director for Pump Up the Volume. Um, <laughs> he directed I Am Legend, Water for Elephants, and a bunch of Hunger Games. Uh, twenty eighteen, he did Red Sparrow, and then he's got like mm. a ton of uh of a uh, television work. He's directed some Gotham. Um, actually not a ton, just a little bit of television work, a few shows. Um, it was written by Kevin Broadbin. Uh, he wrote the glimmer man, <laughs> the 2004 mind hunters. Um, and that seems to be about it. He, uh, ooh. He, uh, the Siege of Jadotville on Netflix he hasn't had a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, it was also written by Frank Capello. Uh, he has a, an additional writing credit on this. Uh, let's see. He wrote Suburban Commando with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rainbow Six, No Way Back. Um, yeesh. He was a quiet man. He wrote and directed. And he was also listed as a creative consultant on Suburban Commando. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. A Suburban Commando wouldn't do that. Hulk Hogan's like, are you sure? I have to wear the tutu. <laughs> um, the stars, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Not another Keanu. Um... So, <laughs> not the kitten. No, no. Oh my God, I forgot about that movie. I love that movie. Um, oh, yeah. Keanu. I didn't realize this. He was born in Beirut and grew up in Toronto. Hmm. Um, wow. Before moving to Hawaii. 
Uh, his, uh, I'm sure everybody knows Keanu. Um, his uh, first role was um, on a One Step Away. That's a short film. His first major role was in a movie called Young Blood. Then he was in some. This is all 1986. 86 was his year. Young Blood, Flying, and then The River's Edge. Oh, River's Edge is a crazy movie. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> um, then he had a God. He did nothing in '87, <laughs> and in '88 he had a bunch of movies I don't remember. Night Before, Permanent Record, Prince of Pennsylvania, and then Dangerous Liaisons. And then a little picture called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Was that uh, before My Own Private Idaho? It was, yes, by yeah. by a few years. I don't remember, yeah. Um, of course, then he'd follow that up. Point break. Utah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, My Own Private Idaho was in 91. <laughs> Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still confused by his uh, casting in that movie. That movie is yeah. crazy. I know. Yeah, I wonder if I should have... Well. If when I'm we do ninety two, when we do ninety two, that's got to end up on yeah for real somebody's list. <laughs> Crazy. Um, Speed, of course. Johnny Mnemonic, um, Devil's Advocate, um, little flick called The Matrix, and of course his uh, big breakout role. Um, something's got to give. <laughs> <laughs> and most recently, of course, uh, uh, John Wick is what he's known for these days more. So, um, oh yeah, I forgot he was in Toy Story Four, Duke Kaboom. Yeah. Um, Bill and Ted Face the Music, which I haven't watched yet. I keep forgetting to get around to that. And uh, Matrix Four is now filming. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Yippee. Yeah. Uh, Rachel yep. Wise stars as Angela Dodson. Um, she's well, British. What's her name? Huh. Um, yeah, she's very British. She's yeah. married to Daniel Craig. Oh, yeah, she's super British then. Yeah. <laughs> she's married to James Bond, bro. <laughs> yeah. She bagged a Bond. <laughs> she's militantly British. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't be more if she invented fucking porridge. She's more British than Money Penny. Uh, her film yep. debut was in 1994's Death Machine. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, uh, why would anyone make that machine? <laughs> well, uh, um, she also starred in The Mummy, The Mummy Returns, which may or may not be in the Van Helsing universe. Um, About a Boy, The Fountain, Lovely Bones, Constant Gardener, um, Born Legacy. Um, oh, God, I was the great and powerful. Um. Oh, she was engaged to Darren Aronofsky. She broke up with him to marry <laughs> Daniel Craig. Yeah, I think they were engaged when uh, they were making The Fountain. Huh. I think. Oh, yeah. Fountain. Um, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> A young French lad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shia, I hope you're listening. You're great. Your <laughs> chaos is in, in, incarnate. Yeah. Yeah. D- I, yeah. Who? Yeah. This, this was just Shia is the kid from Holes, which is crazy. Basically, yeah. 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 He was just kind of riffing. He was definitely, yeah. He was pulling it off. You can tell he's doing something, though. Like, yeah. like not everybody in that role would have been doing something, but he, he had something going on that was like just him. Yeah. 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 You can see in these early roles how he became a movie star. Yeah. <laughs> Just everything yeah. since then is kind of like, like, oh, Shia. Well, well I think everything yeah. since then has been an effect of him becoming a movie star and everything, being, everything having since, fame. Since Transformers, I think. Yeah. Well, and he, he doesn't have it as bad as Haley Joel Osment, but he mm-hmm. also has that, like, he, he does, never quite looks like an adult, no matter how he tries. Yeah, yeah no. Well, he, he was a child actor that was like, forced by his family to act kind of thing. That's yeah. Mm. He's an interesting character. He's done some but good movies just, though. I will say, uh, yeah, fury yeah. was incredible. Mm. Mm. Um, battle tank Sh- movie. Okay. Oh yeah. I heard that was good. Yeah. He is like, yeah, he's, that's his best movie. I think, um, his first movie was called the Christmas path. 
Uh, uh, he was a Hallmark a, movie. I imagine, yeah. Um, yeah. Battle of Shaker Heights. He was in Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. Wow. Dumb and Dumber when Harry met Lloyd. Um, all that was pre Holes. Then he did Holes, iRobot, Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. Disturbia is probably the first time I heard of him as a person that like as as like some, like someone to notice. Not the kid from Holes. Yeah. That's there's like right. a before he was the kid for from Holes and then after the kid from Holes and then he lost his mind in public. That, um, <clears throat> the battle for Shaker Heights, that was the um movie that was made um through that show B- Project Greenlight. Oh yes, that's right. With uh Ben so, Affleck. And, and Matt, Matt yeah, Dave. Matt Damon and oh Chris my God. whatever his name is. Who made all the American Pie movies? But anyways, so that's how I first learned about him because I watched that show, and then bam, you, they released the movie. Yeah. Oh my god, I forgot that show existed. Um, that was a good show. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, he of course played Will- Henry Jones the Third in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. He had a nice leather jacket. <laughs> he did. <laughs> that might have been the best part of that movie. Yeah, um, I think so. Uh, he, uh, he was recently in the Peanut Butter Falcon. What? <laughs> the most delicious uh, raptor of all, right? Yeah. Um, his oh wow, his actual earliest role on television was in Caroline in the City. Huh. <laughs> um, Tilda Swinton plays the Archangel Gabriel. Um, Tilda Swinton was formed from a mold of frankincense and <laughs> silver. Um. She's an otherworldly being. Yeah. Sure. Oh my god, yeah. Um she's she, what you a fellow tin foil guys call Norwegian aliens. She, Scandinavian aliens. Yeah, absolutely. She spent about um about, Welcome up, bros. <laughs> she spent about ten years um in the Royal Shakespeare Company before she moved into film. That was in the eighties. Um wow. let's see. Uh I bet she was fantastic. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. On stage, I imagine. Yeah. Um, her first film was Caravaggio. Um, <laughs> a bunch of movies with Italian names. Um, or possibly, yeah, these all seem Italian. Caprice, Aria, um, then Egomania, Incel One Hoffnung. I don't think that's Italian. Um, <laughs> das Enderer <laughs> and Erwelt, um, La Esperanza. <laughs> The first English <laughs> film she was in seems to be War Requiem. Um, oh, Orlando. What was her breakout? Orlando. Really... The, Orlando's the first Orlando. thing I heard of her in. Um, the, her first <laughs> big breakout, though, was 2000's The Beach with oh, Leo. Um, then, of course, she was in Vanilla Sky, Adaptation. Um, she played the White Witch in uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um Michael Clayton. She, the ancient one, um, Dr. Strange. Yes. Yes. Um, Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Um, yeah. Moonrise Kingdom, Snowpiercer, Grand Budapest Hotel. And then, of course, we will see her again in Dr. Strange and uh, Endgame. Mm-hmm. Um, she is currently working on the live action Pinocchio. Dear Lord. Um, which is being co-written and directed by Guillermo del Toro. What? Are we going to get a uh, live-action Fantasia? <laughs> I, ooh. Mm. Really wild. <laughs> from, from Disney. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Fantasia had live-action elements. Mr. Tchaikovsky. Ha-ha. Or Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Forget the conductor's <laughs> name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Pruitt Taylor Vince starred as Father Hennessy. <laughs> His name was Hennessy, and he drank. Um he was, uh, but not the henny, man. Yeah, Get that henny and that apple juice—that's a good mix, right yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, he was. Yeah, in, he needs something to blame it on. <laughs> he was in Shy People, Mississippi Burning, Jacob's Ladder, Nobody's Fool, Beautiful Girls. Ugh, that movie. Uh, Legend in nineteen hundred. Gotti. Most recently, he was in Bird Box. No, but he was in another horror movie in the late nineties or two thousands. Uh, what was it? Uh, let me see. It was... Or it was a horror movie. Yeah. City Slickers Where's 2, all... The Legend of Curly's Gold. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> it was a Natural Born Killers. Let me see. Um, 
<laughs> the nineteen. I know it wasn't seven. <laughs> Doctor Doolittle. This, he was in the cell. Maybe um, that's it. To uh, see him do wild eyed like he was in a huh, whatever. That's fine. Uh, we can go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamon Hansu as Papa Midnight. Oh, hang on! Before yeah. we jump to Papa Midnight, uh, Pruitt Taylor Vince. He was in four episodes of Agents of Shield, um, season five. I think when they went to the future, is that they went oh, to the future? Oh, he's the the guy who runs the shop. The yeah, yeah, Grill. That's right. Is, is yeah. the name? He's uh, so he's yeah. He was Grill in Agents of Shield. I uh, yeah. fell I fell off in like season three or four with Agents of Shield. It gets better. Shield, so, oh, I saw. It, I thought it was fine. Like it, I saw it getting better, but there was a certain point where it was just like these are a lot of like. Really... There are twenty two episodes in each season. Right, There's a lot. Except for the last two seasons. They're shorter. Yeah, I got bored fast. Yeah. Um, the first season was definitely like, come on, guys. Um, but uh, let's see. Uh, Jamon Onsu was, uh, let's see. In Papa Killing- Midnight? Yeah, Papa Midnight. He was in Killing Zoe, Stargate, Amistad, Gladiator, uh, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. Um, the Island with Michael Bay is the Island. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Uh, we will see him again in Guardians of the Galaxy as Korath, the Thank Pursuer. You. Yeah. And in who? And in Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. yeah. Um, he also is in Shazam. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, oh, the elder. With the. Yeah. Uh, with the wizard. Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, he's currently filming A Quiet Place, or, well, no, his, his, <laughs> I guess it's been filmed. They're just not releasing these things right now because it's 2020. Um, his most recent film is A Quiet Place Part 2. Oh, wow. <laughs> Still quiet. <laughs> Still quiet after all these years. <laughs> um, his, very, quiet. his very first role was on Beverly Hills 90210 as Doorman. <laughs> 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 is that a recurring character or was he just the doorman outside of one of the characters no he was, i never watched beverly hills 90210 i know nothing about he, it besides it was he like was bobby rapid. doorman he was like he was like damn brenda why you gotta be like that <laughs> oh bobby Let me get that door for you <laughs> um <laughs> Balthazar was played by Gavin Rossdale, a.k.a. the dude from yep. Bush. A.k.a. Mr. Formerly Mr. Gwen Stefani. <laughs> the, former yeah. Mrs., the former Mr. Gwen Stefani, right. So um, I found out that uh, he was in a pop band in the 80s before Bush started. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Called they were- Shrubbery? <laughs> <laughs> um they were hedge hedgerow they everything them. is hedge themed <laughs> um, they were actually called midnight um he opened for Ooh. big country and cindy lopper i found their song on huh? youtube it's terrible <laughs> I, I encourage everyone to go listen to it um but uh film wise uh he was in a few things. Uh, this was his first role. He went on, or well, no, Zoolander was his first role. This, uh, the <laughs> game, uh, Little Black Book, Game of Their Lives, How to Rob a Bank. Most recently, he was in The Bling Ring and Burn Notice. Okay. Um, so uh, we've got Peter Stormare as Lucifer Morningstar. Stormare. Stormare, I'm sorry. Um, Carl Hungus. Yeah. He was born his okay, his given name is Rolf Peter Ingvar Storm. He changed it from Storm to Stormare. Huh. Um Rolf, I, 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 don't, I don't know if it's Stormare. Sto- wait, wait, no, no. Uh, Wikipedia tells me that it's Stor- Stormar or Stormare. Huh. Okay. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. Um, he could have been Rolf Storm, though. Anyways, um, <laughs> he's Swedish. He uh, played Geir Grimsrud in Fargo. Uh, 
He was in Prison Break, uh, Lost World Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. He played the, uh, was he the big game hunter? Um, no, he wasn't yeah. the big game hunter. That was. Um, he was big gay hunter. Look, <laughs> 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 cowboys. I mean, you'd be surprised. A lot of those big game hunters in all the Jurassic Park movies were pretty gay. All of them. Yeah. Never go. Yeah. Hanging out in the bush. Hanging out in the bushes with other guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, he was in the Big Lebowski. All of hunting. Big Lebowski, Armageddon, Wind Talkers, Minority Report, Bad Boys 2, and 22 Jump Street. Um, yeah, he's that character actor. He's that guy that you're like, oh, yeah, it's that guy. Um, um, most recently, uh, he was in um, American Gods. Oh. The, the TV series. Um, stars, I think. He was Zernabog. Has it, have uh, any of you watched American Gods? I have, yeah. Is it good? I've watched a few episodes of it. it the fun. first season was really good. The second season, uh, the something happened with the showrunners. Um, like they left or over like creative control or something. And the the second season suffered for it. Mm. Is the first um, season just the book? Um, I think the book not even the up, whole book. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, really? It's, it's, yeah, it's a. Uh, a few chapters of the, several chapters of the book. Huh. Interesting. Um, <laughs> this movie was reviewed by Roger Ebert, but not on video. He wrote, no, Constantine is not part of a trilogy, including Troy and Alexander. <laughs> it's not about the emperor at all, <laughs> but about a man <laughs> who can see the world oh. behind the world. <laughs> and it's waging war against the scavengers of the damned. There was a nice documentary about Emperor Penguins, however, at Sundance this year. The males, <laughs> the males sit on the eggs all winter long in like 60 degrees below zero. 1.5 stars. He <laughs> <laughs> really stopped the giving the penguins a f- in the middle of his review. <laughs> he really stopped giving a fuck towards the end. God bless him. He's like... Constantine is so bad, you should watch March of the Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie has 46% on Rotten Tomatoes. 46%? Yes. Wow. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I thought it, it was better than that. Yeah, I thought it was it fine. Not bad. It was, pretty- it was Cromulent. Yeah, I enjoyed this more than I expected to. Cromulent I enjoyed this fuck. more than I thought I did as a kid. <laughs> Um, I don't think I'd seen it since 2005 and it, I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, um, a- Oh, uh, I, I feel like, uh, it might be so low in the ratings because of some like John Constantine comics fans, some hardcore fans of mm, the character. Yeah. That makes sense. It, it was, yeah, I don't know. It was imperfect characterization. I heard it was all political. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it won the electoral Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I heard it won 2005 MTV Movie Award for Best Kiss. For best Kiss <laughs> between yeah, Keanu between Satan and, and Swindon. John Constantine. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, by the way, guys, I'm I'm instituting a new segment here after we go through the movie called Unanswered Questions because I ha- I okay. had I had a couple for this one. That wow. watching the movie right. twice didn't necessarily answer, although some of them might get answered as we go through it. Um, but um, I'm thinking of keeping that in for future movies, too. So if there's any questions that come up in future movies that remain unanswered for you, we'll pop them in there. Um, <laughs> like a Pop-Tart. Um, <laughs> Too hot to get it out of the microwave. Though. Gotta wait. We're going to make a special place for them at the end. That's right. Cool. Um, so you guys ready to get into this? Yes. Yeah, let's get in our bathtubs and go to hell for a moment. <laughs> totally. Break a light bulb. Yeah. This is Constantine. We open with text. It reads, He who possesses the Spear of Destiny holds the date of the world in his hands. It's the been fate. The fate of... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, autocorrect. <laughs> the fate of the world in his hands. That makes a lot more sense, Al. Thank you. Dates are delicious. Well, though. I'm crossing one thing off of my uh, <laughs> unanswered <laughs> questions. 
<laughs> it's been missing since World War II. Then we cut what looks like a war zone in Central America. We get a Manuel. That's literally his name. Um, he's digging through the remains of a destroyed church. He uncovers a spearhead wrapped in a Nazi flag. It turns him invincible, as evidenced by him taking down a car. He runs off into the desert. <laughs> yeah, that must have been a conflict for a lot of people. And they're like, I do love this Nazi propaganda, but I don't appreciate the Latin American immigrant. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, it was too so early conflicted. in the timeline for that. If that movie had yeah. come out now, people would have been picketing out front. This is unfair. Oh, you're right. They would have been a bit like, we don't like the way Nazis were represented yeah. in this movie. Uh, uh, um, we get a title card. Then we're in L.A. <laughs> There's a girl doing the old Linda Blair ceiling crawl. She's the no, doctor. She's doing that ceiling thing again. <laughs> Give her some ibuprofen. <laughs> Wrap a hot towel around her head. <laughs> Wrap her in this blanket and have her sit on the back of an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> and sip tea or coffee, we're never sure. <laughs> right. It's in a Greek cup. Um she's possessed. They try to call a priest who calls John Constantine, who shows up with his trusty sidekick, the cab driving Chaz. Con- he says asshole like it's his title. He's like I'm Constantine, John Constantine, asshole. <laughs> I'm surrounded by assholes. Uh, Constantine pulls the demon out of the girl with a mirror and sends it back to hell. A mysterious figure playing with a coin watches as he talks to the priest. Turns out it's the guy from Bush. <laughs> <laughs> He's all glycerine. <laughs> um... Uh, let's see. John convinces the priest to use his psychic powers to get some info about what's going down in the supernatural world. <laughs> Chaz drives John home where he appears to live above a bowling alley and below another bowling alley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, it's all bowling alleys all the way, all the way down. <laughs> the priest, Father Hennessy, um, he, uh, he can communicate with the dead. And that's why he drinks so much to turn off that power. Me too. Uh, to keep the voices out, and also the the amulet that he was wearing around his neck. Um, I don't know. John takes it off and puts it in his pocket, and it's like just for a few days. Yeah. So just, just listen. So Feel put the your feelers out there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so, so the amulet blocks the ghost, the supernatural. So if if the kid from the sixth sense had been drinking, <laughs> he would or have not been the kid. Yeah, uh, it would have been a lot more fun yeah, of a movie. Been, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> it would have, have just been him ignoring Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> yo bro yo hey kid i'm over here go go away <laughs> just ha- him hanging outside the liquor stores will you get me a bottle of schnapps <laughs> sure kid <laughs> yeah, like some creme de menthe uh <laughs> like, you're too young to be drinking i see fucking dead people <laughs> oh okay so Let me get you something game. stronger than schnapps then <laughs> yeah later on later on my mom scarlett johansson's gonna buy a zoo what <laughs> You're going to make me deal with that. <laughs> um, so. Was his mom Scarlett Johansson in that movie? Oh, wait, no, she wasn't the mom, was she? she I was, was like, was she old enough she to be was, his mother? She was, yeah, she she was, was the, zoo, the zoo lady that like was into the animals that, uh, who was the dad in that? Was it, um, it wasn't the Hulk, was it? Um, the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> I bought uh, a zoo. Her dad was into the zoo animals? Oh, I bought a zoo? In- I bought a zoo. <laughs> Matt Damon was in that, wasn't Matt he? Damon, yeah. that's right. Matt and Damon. Scarlett Johansson. Matty jo- Damon. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson was like his love interest. Okay. Um, so I thought he loved the animals. I'm confused. I never saw that movie. <laughs> so Why maybe they loved them together. It was a real freaky zoo. So are, the, we, are we pulling a Roger Ebert here? Are we going to switch to <laughs> yeah, talking about exactly. What is this point, Al? What does this have to do? <laughs> Who bought a zoo? What the fuck? I think Keanu Reeves might have at some point. <laughs> he probably gave it back to the zoo ne- animals. He's so nice. Neverland. Yeah, he probably did. All right. All right. So, so then we find a cop, a lady cop, confessing her sins to the priest. The way she says, she so she's, she's telling me, she says, it's been one week since my last confession, but she pauses. She says, it's been 
I kept wanting to jump in. One week since you looked at me. You looked at me. Same. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. One week uh, since I killed the dude. <laughs> Saw a ghost, and then my sister killed herself. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's mostly confessing about all the murders that she does as a cop, which plays great in 2020. And yeah, the priest is pretty cool with it. Um, she has psychic ability to find bad guys. And they just happen to walk in front of her gun while she pulls the trigger over and <laughs> over again for that whole thing. Like I just, everybody I see is bad. So I shoot them. I just, I'm closing my eyes and shooting and the bad guys are jumping in front of my gun. <laughs> what are you going to do when they come for you? <laughs> yeah. This movie would be, it is weird to watch in 2020 with the Nazi symbolism and the shooting of the bad guys yeah. and the existence of God. That's so <laughs> <laughs> It's clearly been disproven at this point. (laughs) He has left us. She goes to sleep, and then we see her wake up in a hospital. (laughs) She runs up to the roof and jumps to her death, landing on the hospital pool. Then she wakes up again in the bed. We just saw her fall asleep again. It's so confusing. (laughs) I know they have them for physical therapy and things, but it just sounds like hotel pool. The hospital pool? No. I'll be down at Ooh, no, no, the Jude, hospital pool. Jude, yeah. Jude asked me, like, do they have pools and hospitals? I was like, I guess. <laughs> I know, this is a really rich hospital in New York, I guess. There's a large atrium over it. <laughs> right. It's like, it's like uh, our heart surgery is quite well known, but also our pool. Well, and also hospitals are full, like, 24 hours a day of people, usually. So. <laughs> yeah. One of one. Yeah, I didn't write this in my unanswered questions, but one of the questions is, where are all the fucking doctors and patients in this hospital? That's a good question. At Raven Scar, that's the name of it. <laughs> Raven yeah. Scar. Yeah, yeah it they, was. Oh, that's God. dark. It is dark. I'd be uh, like, no, let's go to St. Mike's down the yeah. road. <laughs> let's start there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Hufflepuff. Is there a fucking urgent <laughs> care that we can go to? <laughs> That's the only Catholic saint you can remember. <laughs> Hufflepuff. <laughs> Raven Scar, Hufflepuff. Um, so then, yeah, all the big ones. Yeah. Then John, John Constantine coughs up some blood, so he goes to the doctor who tells him, you're dying from lung cancer. Um, the like co- he is... The guy is made of cancer at this point. Yeah. He's more cancer. He would not just be coughing blood. He would be in like excruciating pain. He's more cancer constantly. now than man. He, he would have already had the Drake. Yeah. Like he wouldn't be able to breathe yeah. or walk or do anything. He's yeah. Like, they I overdid it with the cancer in the lungs, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever made that x ray. Yeah. They're you, like, you, just. You, just Make his lungs cancer. Do you think the director kept looking at it? He was like, no, more cancer. <laughs> dark, dark. Um, so then the cop lady shows up at the hospital. We find out her name is Angela. The dead lady that looks like her isn't her at all. It's her twin sister, Isabel. She's told Isabel committed suicide, but Angela don't believe that news. Meanwhile, Manuel has no... What you talking about, Constantine? <laughs> Meanwhile, Manuel has no problem entering the United States illegally. Cows hate him and his one weird trick. Yeah. He uh, jumped right over that fence. Yeah, he said, fuck it. <laughs> yes, he, he, didn't, did. he didn't climb it. He just jumped right over no. it. If only there had right been a big, it. beautiful wall. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> Trump <laughs> saw this. Like somebody like cut a clip of this and was like... <laughs> God. This is how it's happening. He's all, are you shitting me? <laughs> Mexicans are jump jumping like our that? fences You're... and killing our cows. Holy With the shit. spear of destiny? <laughs> <laughs> oh my I just God. want to see Donald Trump <laughs> at the next debate be like, there's one thing I know we have to stop the spear of destiny from entering Manuel. our Manuel. There's oh a man God. out there named be... Manuel. It would be so easy if the right person tweeted or said something to him, just threw out Spear of Destiny or like Fountain of Information. Or just a gif of that freaking video of him jumping over he would, the wall. He'd, he'd definitely retweet no, it. No, but he, yeah. Well, he would because that's immigrants. But I'm saying you come up with any other patch of crazy thing and he would just run with it. What was he it? would say they have the Spear of Destiny if someone just mentioned that around him. <laughs> I'm really upset that we never got the campaign to have him uh, talk about the situation in Wakanda going. <laughs> yes, oh my exactly. God. That's what I'm talking about. Like, we need that technology. 
<laughs> um, so uh, why should they have all the vibranium? <laughs> <laughs> vibranium is America's right, God given right to take all the vibranium. We could get it from fracking. <laughs> I'm building a pipeline to pipe the vibranium. <laughs> I don't know. We'd have a lot of arguments with like the Chinese and the Dutch and the British, though, I'm sure, over Wakanda. Oh, 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 God, yeah. Uh, so at home, John is visited by a nudie super, supernatural relic dude who gives him holy water grenades and a holy flamethrower. John tells him about the little possessed girl. He keeps calling her a little girl. In the close-up, she looked like she was like, like 18 yeah. to 22. <laughs> Yeah, she yeah. was clearly like a young adult at youngest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So I've got a list of uh, the, the things that the dude brought, Beeman, uh, that he brought. So he's got bullet shavings from the assassination attempt on the Pope. Um, holy water ampules from the River Jordan. Right. A screech beetle from Amityville. And uh, mm-hmm. the weaponized dog <laughs> breath. The weaponized dragon breath. Um, and a bottle of cops <laughs> the benign. Yes. yes. I, it's the good stuff though. It's got it's not like this uh stuff that they make now because like uh they don't want anyone to make meth with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's codeine. It's yeah, it was a real robotus. Yeah, that's yeah. right. The tussin. The tussin. Shit'll get you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think they're talking oh, he's claiming that it's a soldier demon and that he was trying to break through to this side, you know, to our plane. And yeah. it's either Chaz or Beeman selling them like that. They can't do that. <laughs> and Constantine's like, check the scrolls for precedent. My yeah. God, it's here. <laughs> Soldier Demon versus the state of New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I found the precedent. <laughs> the <Supreme laughs> witch court. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he has a <laughs> little <laughs> land snatch. Land. Sea <laughs> snatch. Uh, so, um. That's good. John goes to some Catholic church library place where he runs into Angela. Oh, yeah. He ran into her earlier, too, in the hospital and refused to uh, hold the elevator for her. Right. So did they already know each other? No. No. no they just keep running into each other. It, it's, he's it, just he's a super dick. Yeah. Okay. It's like all cops are bastards. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> poor, poor ladies trying to ride an elevator. Uh, so um, she's there to see a priest. John's there to see the angel Gabriel, who's just chilling. A uh, priest tells Angela that Isabel can't have a Catholic funeral because she committed suicide. <clears throat> uh, Gabriel and John argue. John wants to go to heaven. Gabriel tells him, nah, demon hunting doesn't count <laughs> for heaven. It, it, <laughs> is that a real thing? Like you can't have like a normal ass <laughs> Catholic funeral? I know that you're not going to go to heaven. Oh. But like they won't let you have a funeral? Like, nah, you got to have like a Apparently. public park or something, man. I don't know. You <laughs> we got to go like the parish you know, or up to the family, but yeah, fl- the Kiwanis Club. They flush you like a fish. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. The Kiwanis Club. <laughs> the Kiwanis. I, don't know, I don't know where people have, have funerals. Down at the, the Arby's. Honestly. The Arby's hey, on man. 22nd. Um. Speaking of flushing. I think it's sort of like because you know, well, isn't it true that Mormons can uh, baptize dead people? Oh yeah, baptism for the dead. Are <laughs> so really- I think it's the other way around too with the Catholics. Like you could be excommunicated even though you're dead. <laughs> so that uh, makes sense. So like, I mean, it, rules are made up, and the points don't matter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. The Christianity story. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Whose God is it anyway? Um, <laughs> Arguing semantics for two thousand years and more. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 this this was uh, I guess the the beginning of uh, Tilda Swinton's awesomeness and I don't know stealing the show kind of thing because uh-huh. that that's that was my ultimate take on her that she just sold she just stole the show with this movie but she had her. Yeah. The final line of that scene, she says, you're going to die young because you smoked 30 cigarettes a day since you were 15. And you're going to hell because of the life you took. You're fucked. Mm, yeah. And it's just a great delivery from someone who's supposed to be an, an archangel. Yeah. Right. No, every second yeah. she's on screen, she steals the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. In most movies. Yeah. She's in. Yeah, absolutely. 
um, because she was it's forged hard to look away she, from she, she, <laughs> she was forged in the heart of a star. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so John and Angela both leave unsatisfied. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> the priest that called Constantine to the exorcism earlier is using his psychic powers to read newspapers a lot. <laughs> He's scanning them for evil goings on. He's drawn to a story about Isabel's suicide. At home, Angela is watching a video surveillance of Isabel's suicide, and she hears Isabel whisper, Constantine, on the video. Upon playback, it's actually Rosebud. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say Constantine? I can't <laughs> right? say it again. So I'm glad when she played it back. There wasn't sound because I was like, wait a minute, what kind of surveillance on the roof is this? <laughs> That's a good boy. It's like <laughs> it's like the surveillance of Wayne Manor. Right. Yeah. There's a camera and a boom mic right next to you. <laughs> um, then her many, many telephones began ringing. The she woman had a lot has of a, phones. She had a lot of phones. Lot of phones. <laughs> Different numbers. Right. Yeah. yeah, lots of that's films. expensive in in two thousand five. I assume that this was for all of her uh, CIs, her confidential informants. So she's like got a lot of feelers out in the community, so people can call her and not know that they're calling. She's not; they're not calling the cop. That was just my hunch. I don't well, know. one of the phones the was. I just figure she I, she was a sucker who fell for fell for every pitch at a mall kiosk. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the phones she answered was a fax machine phone. So if you pick that up, the fax isn't going to come through. Why are you answering that? Yeah, um, I don't understand that like scene. Deep... Yeah, so too many phones. <laughs> too many phones. Um, sorry. Uh, too many cooks reference there. Uh, meanwhile, strange things are afoot at the Seven <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> thank you, thank you. John is attacked by a demon made entirely out of bugs. Yeah. And, yeah, can I, can and, I and, some and one crab. Yeah, Anyways, go ahead. You're right. And one crab. That's funny. <laughs> um, some good closed captioning here was unholy grunting. <laughs> <laughs> Were they in my room? <laughs> unholy <laughs> grunting. Um, I I appreciated the uh, ominous Chevy Equinox billboard. Yeah. <laughs> why why is it your last chance? <laughs> your, you? your time is running out to yeah. buy a new Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> like why? That was that was like full on like um um Simpsons level of like yeah. reveal of the billboard. <laughs> Anything slim. Um Homer, this is God. Free Jones. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he kills the demon bug guy and goes to uh, Papa Midnight's club called Midnight's. <laughs> Always a sinister nightclub. A night place for singles. <laughs> um, a place for night people. where night meets. Um, it's a secret supernatural bar where you have to prove you're psychic to get in. John heads to the back room where the real party is. <laughs> where mm-hmm. Papa Midnight, the proprietor of the establishment, <laughs> is hanging out. John tells Midnight that demons are coming to Earth. Midnight doesn't believe him, and John asks to use the chair. Midnight refuses him. Then a well-dressed demon named Balthazar shows up and taunts John for a while. John's like, nobody likes your music anymore, Balthazar, and he leaves <laughs> coughing. I liked the uh, security cards. Um uh, that you had to psychically read. Yeah. Um, there yeah. were two frogs on a bench, <laughs> um, a rat in a dress. That's the one Chaz couldn't guess because he just said two frogs on a bench again. But Chaz gets turned away because his card had a rat in a dress. Well, and Chaz, even before they walk up, he he starts to repeat what they have been before because he even says yeah. the one about the frogs. Uh-huh. So do they keep the same deck? They just shuffle through the same fucking deck because eventually it's not psychic anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's just odds. <laughs> well, you, you're like, it's one of these. It's There's a rat a... in a dress. It's a frog on a bench. <laughs> yeah. They uh, should mix in other cards every now and then, I, I would think. Yeah. Well, they probably, probably got a few. Yeah. A uh, couple yeah. of wavy lines. Um, then. Like, we use like four decks, like in a casino. <laughs> 
<laughs> they uh, they keep coming up with new ones. It, uh, they print them at the same place where they get the uh, Chinese fortunes printed out. <laughs> yeah, same place. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna need four thousand cookies and a bunch of these demon bar cards. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Uh, at home, John is visited by Angela. She tells him her sister was murdered, and she thinks her sister was brainwashed by a cult into killing herself. John doesn't want to help, but then he, he turns her away, but then he sees a bunch of demons run past his window. He goes after Angela, tells her about the deal God and the devil made not to interfere with life on Earth. Just then, all the lights go out on the street, a bunch of demons attack them, and John uses magic fire to destroy them all. <clears throat> John tells Angela he thinks they were after her. They go to Isabel's apartment, where John ruins his shoes, and I'm sorry, they go to Angela's <laughs> apartment, where John ruins his shoes and uses a cat to visit hell so that he can verify Isabel is there. I liked their exchange just before uh, the demons uh, were revealed. Um, she says, it wasn't funny, but it was It was just, I don't know. Uh, she says, I don't believe in the devil. And he says, you should. He believes in you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you can do it, Angela. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, but it's funny. Yeah, they, I've heard that before. You know, they're, yeah, that... He believes in you no matter what. God's sort of ambivalent. Yeah. But the devil's paying attention. It was a good scene. Yeah. But I don't uh, I also liked the the way that, that he views or can transfer to hell. I don't understand why you have to have your shoes on. <laughs> they both had their shoes on when they did it. Not sure what um, unanswered question. But, but I like the cat. I like the that he's like, you know, they're they're sort of halfway anyways. They walk between yeah. worlds. They're they're half in half out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I um, believe that. About later Absolutely. on in the movie, when he the second time he goes to hell, he's not wearing his shoes. Oh, she's wearing shoes, and she asks if she should undress, and he says no, but she gets full on it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it seems Who gets un- into anything it with seems, their shoes. Yeah, it seems unnecessary. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> arbitrary. Uh, you could have your shoes on or off. I feel like in this scene, he just didn't <laughs> want to take his shoes off because he's got like nasty stank foot. And oh, he's, he's still trying to impress her a little bit. I got you. There you need, go. Need some tough acting, tin acting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so he brings back proof he's, that Isabel. No, he, sorry, he's got that little creature that comes in and like flips your toenail. <laughs> oh, oh God, that, I turn. hate that one. Oh my God, your hand motion just grossed me out. That made me see it. <laughs> oh God, that guy. Okay. So uh, John Wick brings back proof in the form of her hospital ID bracelet. Um, See? The priest, uh, Father Hennessy, visits the morgue where he touches Isabel's body, which causes him to freak out, but not in the, like, I just touched a body way and the demons are fucking with me way. Uh, He runs to a convenience store and he can't drink any liquor. Balthazar shows up. The priest collapses, drowning in all the liquor he just didn't drink and carves a symbol on his own hand with a corkscrew before dying. <laughs> it's like, yeah, if only there was a marker. <laughs> right? <laughs> Instead, I grabbed the bit of corkscrew. <laughs> um, John and Angela are at a diner where John's explaining that when he was a kid, he could see demons. He tried to kill himself, but was saved by paramedics after being dead for two minutes. He went to hell in that time and knows he'll be sent back when he dies again because he committed suicide. And he uh, he explains how time stops um, in hell, uh, how two minutes is a lifetime. Yeah. Essentially. But yeah, he was officially dead for two minutes. Yeah. Um, then he tells her that demons and angels can't come to Earth directly, but use what he calls half-breeds that can influence humans. John sends the half-breeds that break the rules back to hell as an attempt to get into heaven when he dies. Influence peddlers. I love that term. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. It is also known as Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, Angela gets a call about the priest and she goes to investigate, bringing Constantine with her. <laughs> and the other cops are like, hey, he can't come on this crime scene. And she's like, no, he's cool. He's cool. But his shoes are all wet. That's fine. 
<laughs> and this is a crime scene. <laughs> Oh, this dude's just going to walk around and contaminate. You don't mind, do you? No, and then he literally does. He starts swabbing at his bloody hand of the <laughs> victim. Yeah. He washes the victim's hand and then takes a print. He's like, the, you yeah. didn't need this for evidence, right? Um, <laughs> there, there's usually nothing on the hand, on the human hand. <laughs> don't worry, officer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he gets a, he does that to get a copy of the symbol the priest carved into his palm. Then John calls the nerdy gadget guy to tell him about the symbol. John and Angela head to the hospital pool <laughs> where Isabel died. Um, and For Margaret? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Angela tells him that Isabel could see demons, and they find that she left a secret message on the window of her room about a passage of the Bible in hell. Hell has its own Bible. Right, because it's a passage that doesn't exist. Yeah, in like the known Bible. Seventeen to Corinthians. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Dune books. Right. You think there was only a few Corinthians. Twelve, right? <laughs> Wrong. I think it I think it stopped at sixteen. It did it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um I didn't don't know. Tr- Trump misquote Corinthians. Isn't that <laughs> Yeah, there was uh, he That was split. recent. Was he the do- Corinthians? Yeah. yeah, it was something like that. Was he just I trying to forget. do the Pulp Fiction quote? <laughs> <laughs> no, Which he is referred to not the, from the Bible. That's just a made-up quote. I know. Yeah, I think he, um, yeah, was referring to them as a group of people, Corinthians, <laughs> that are anyway. trying to come into America. <laughs> they got the spear of destiny. <laughs> they got it. They got it in Mexico. <laughs> well, they. I mean. I don't know how he misquoted it, but the Corinthians were a group of people. Yeah, yeah, but from not foreign. Yeah, <laughs> a group of I'm foreign people. At, that's not how he meant it. Right. But uh, keep moving. Okay, so uh, they call the nerdy tech guy, who I find out is called Beeman, um, who tells John that it indi- that the symbol indicates that Satan's son Mammon will come to Earth to bring about Armageddon. In order to cross over to our plane, Mammon would need to possess a very powerful psychic. And have the help of God. Beeman hears something behind him and hangs up the phone. John and a fly crawls out of his eye. Yeah, it's like oh, <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not good. He's all ironically, my name is B Man, <laughs> but flies. They, they mentioned earlier that he had a thing for bugs. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, he, he likes he, them. He found them he fascinating. Them. And his name is Beeman. Um, John. <laughs> they just name you after things you like in this world. <laughs> so John and Angela race to Beeman's bowling alley lair, but they arrive too late. They find Beeman dead. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. He he was talking about Paul's letters, which is what the Corinthians are. But he, he said the two Corinthians instead of two, like Corinthians two, the very oh, right. The yeah, two like, Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like oh. two Corinthians that he set up this deal with Paul for Those two, two Corinthians. motherfucking Corinthians. <laughs> two Corinthians walk into a bar. Yeah. With their fine Corinthian leather. Um so all right. Uh so meanwhile, Manuel's finally made it to the Coachella Valley where he steals a car. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Back at uh, John's apartment, Angela reveals that she could see demons when she was young, but she blocked the power out in order to fit in, I assume, with the high school cool girls. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because uh, her sister um, is, kept saying she saw demons and they, her parents, they treated her with antipsychotics. So she's like, I don't want right. to take drugs <laughs> i didn't see and anything nancy therapy. reagan told me to say no <laughs> she also well, consulted with a got psychic <laughs> dion warwick yeah uh, yeah was so that nancy she, she reagan's psychic, psychic was dion friend. warwick <laughs> dion no she had a different one uh, i can't remember her name she yeah. had a specific lady it wasn't miss um, cleo either no it wasn't her she's just a phone call away <laughs> like everyone. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. All right. So um Angela wants John to help her get her psychic powers back, so he drowns her for a little bit. <laughs> Just for a bit. Yeah. She realizes that she's always had the power. 
<laughs> it was the demons we met along the way. Um, she finds Balthazar's coin near where Beeman was killed. She's led there by her psychicness. It's pretty mm. careless of Balthazar to drop his coin and just leave it. Yeah. Yeah. His signature. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> so Constantine gets pissed and decides to go after Balthazar with his homemade Jesus gun. Um, they head over to Balthazar's evil office building? Evil boardroom. <laughs> yeah. We had yeah. evil nightclub, evil boardroom. There wasn't a meeting, but we still had that. It wasn't an evil nightclub. It was a neutral nightclub. <laughs> okay, you're right. But it, there was some supernatural not very nice things going on in there. <laughs> yes. Everything is sanctioned. Well, that's true of all <laughs> nightclubs, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I guess they're all neutral. <laughs> uh, so Constantine puts a protective amulet on Angela, tells her to stay in the car, and heads up to pick a fight with Balthazar. Angela decides not to stay in the car, and somehow the second she moves, the fucking amulet falls off her stupid neck. <laughs> like, what the fuck, lady? You can't wear an amulet for five fucking minutes? <laughs> totally. Um, um, I liked uh, when uh, he splashed him with the holy water, he turned into Demon Two-Face. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah. Gross. Yeah, so yeah, John beats up Balthazar with the help of his holy brass knuckles and some literal praying. And Balthazar reveals that the Spear of Destiny is what's being used to bring the Son of Satan over into the material realm. Then he tells John that his real mission was Angela, and John brought her right to them. I liked this scene, uh, the way that John was threatening to absolve Balthazar of his sins and send him to heaven. Yeah, that was the um, threat. That was yeah, and he kept doing the prayers. And then he finally, uh, when Balthazar gives up the info, John's like, by the way, you have to ask for absolution to be forgiven. Asshole. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Catch. Uh, God is essentially the DMV. There's so many regular. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. Yeah, there's so much red tape. Um, so they start to leave. A mysterious figure arrives. Balthazar tells the figure that he's gotten Angela ready as agreed, but the figure double crosses and destroys him. In the hallway, after dropping some exposition, Angela gets yanked out of the building via an invisible force. An invisible horse? <laughs> well, it might have been a horse. It was invisible. Who knows? <laughs> We heard a we heard a slow flapping of wings, so it could have been a Pegasus. Yeah, ah. an invisible Pegasus. <laughs> it certainly could have been. The, the signs checks out. <laughs> so Constantine and Chaz head over to Midnight, where he convinces Papa Midnight to let him use the chair. Papa Midnight, Brainy Midnight, Midnight at <laughs> oh. Brainy Midnight. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Tommy early dawn. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the chair's in a big room full of artifacts. I'm sorry. Midnight at. I said midnight at. Oh, I'm sorry. Oasis. I didn't hear you. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> oh, ow. Um, <laughs> it's an electric chair, and it lets him see that Manuel is at the hospital <laughs> with a bunch of people that are demons that look like people. Yep. The half-breeds, I assume. Um, Constantine and Chaz gear up and Papa Midnight gives Chaz an enchanted cross that can turn any water into holy water. <laughs> uh, and also strawberry Kool-Aid <laughs> at the hospital. We see Angela. Uh, Papa, Papa Midnight tells Chad to see him about membership. If he gets back. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. Mm. Um, <laughs> you have to be sponsored. <laughs> Like the Friars Club. It's like, it's like Facebook before it went public. <laughs> um, at the hospital, we see Angela arrive in the pool where her sister landed. Um, she was in the air a long time because they drove across town, went to the club, did the whole going to hell thing. Um, she was, it was like Loki in... Um, <laughs> In uh, the oh, last he, Thor movie, where he's in just Ragnarok, yeah, yeah, Ragnarok, he's just falling for twenty minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Manuel arrives and gets her, <laughs> pulls her underwater. He just like, Rawr! um, 
Constantine and Chaz then arrive. Chaz puts the enchanted cross in the sprinkler reservoir, and John sets the sprinklers off, dousing the demons in holy water. Then he kills a bunch of them while Manuel drowns Angela. She's in hell, and Satan's son possesses her. <clears throat> so, <laughs> Thursdays on Fox. <laughs> She's possessed, and he's <laughs> Angela and John, <laughs> Satan's son, and the girl <laughs> from around the block, <laughs> and a nosy neighbor who can't. Yeah, played by Edie. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> John and Chaz burst into the pool room where they find a possessed Angela. They try casting the devil's son out. And she comes back into her right mind, but shes he's still trying to break free, crawl out of her belly into the mortal world. John and Chaz think they've <laughs> sent it back when Chaz is suddenly thrown around the room and killed. Yep. Constantine is surprised that uh, once he did the, the chanting and like got the demon out of her head that it's still trying to come out of her stomach. It's like, he doesn't even remember the beginning of the film. Right? <laughs> where, that, where the exact same yeah. thing happened. Yeah, and he said it afterward. Yeah, she. he was trying to break out of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then he's all, what? <laughs> uh, so, uh, John. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, John uses magic to make the bean responsible for killing Chaz visible, and it's Gabriel. She has been... Gabe all along. (laughs) He called her Gabe. (laughs) He's like, Gaby. She's been trying to bring forth Satan's son so that humans will act more nobly in the face of horror and earn their place in heaven. Because she thinks God's too lenient (laughs) with the, like, entrance policy. So God just doesn't give a shit at yeah. all. God's like, really? yeah. God's like He's not involved in the fight. Yeah. yeah, he's like the judge in the Good Place, just like catching up on Justified. Right. <laughs> 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 Sorry, well, yeah. I was paying attention to Timothy Oliphant the whole time. <laughs> and you're good too. Uh, I enjoy him, but yeah, even her plan was. Um, Oh, fuck it. Never mind. I lost my thought. Um, All right. So (laughs) she tosses Constantine out of the room and picks up the Spear of Destiny. Um, She's about to kill Angela with it to bring forth Maman when John in the other room slits his wrists with broken glass to kill himself. Just Oh, right. She had like an Ozymandias type plan. Like, I'll make shit so bad that they'll have to band together and be cool. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um just as Gabriel is about to strike killing Angela and bringing forth Maman, time stops and Satan himself shows up to collect <laughs> Constantine's soul. I'm here to fix Don Cabo. <laughs> Doesn't he ask God just to like pay attention? He's like, I know you don't like me, just pay attention to me. <laughs> it's like, like a kid with a stepdad. <laughs> Well, it's the weirdest he? plea to God ever. It's kind of cool, but at the same time, like, uh, it's kind of sad, bro. <laughs> it really is. I, I don't remember what he said, but yeah, he, he made a little plea to the heavens at first and then sees the glass and slits his wrist. And then he uh, he says, hurry. Oh, yeah. He's like, uh, I'm not welcome in but, your house. But, oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. 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 But I could use a little <laughs> bit of attention and then slits his yeah. wrist. It's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. That's a cry Whoa. for help if I've ever Whoa, seen one. Buddy. Well, I'd, and, like, um, I'd like to point out he slits across <laughs> rather react. than down. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just yeah. going to hurt. Yeah. Um, well, did it, he... I was going to say it just prolongs the, the, the inevitable in that sense instead of it being quick. Yeah. He wasn't necessarily wanting it to be too quick. <clears throat> um, <laughs> when Lucifer shows up, did he call him Lou? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. Reminded me of a fight club. Yeah. Where he's like getting beat up by Lou. <laughs> yeah, I liked uh, I liked the character. I thought it was fun. It was a fun representation of of Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Very much yeah. not the comic representation, but I liked I liked it. Kinda slovenly a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? Not dapper. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. But still fucking scary. <laughs> oh, God. Menacing. Yeah. Definitely menacing. Yeah, menacing. Absolutely. Yeah. Unpredictable. Like you said, a little gross. Yeah. A little too close. He's a close talker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> mouth breather. He's a double dipper. He's a mouth breather. Hissing in his ear. An ear hisser. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Constantine tells him <laughs> what's happening. He's a stone cold lady killer. <laughs> a joker, a smoker, and a midnight toker. Constantine. Yeah. <laughs> um, stairway to heaven. Constantine tells him what's happening in the next room. Uh, <laughs> Lucifer's against his son coming to Earth. So uh, he goes and saves Angela, sends his son back to hell. Gabriel tries to smite Lucifer, but she's lost her powers because God has deserted her because she went all aggro. Satan burns off Gabriel's wings and then goes back to Constantine. Satan offers him a favor for telling him what was going on, and instead of saving himself, John asks for Isabel to be sent to heaven. (laughs) It's like all dogs go to heaven. (laughs) Satan... (laughs) Isabel was a golden retriever all along. <laughs> she wasn't British. <laughs> Wait, so does that make Angela a golden retriever? Because they're twins. They're twins. Yeah. No, no she's a... <laughs> She's all, I'm a chocolate lab. <laughs> uh, Satan grants his wish and then sets about taking John to hell, but John gets pulled towards heaven instead. He's allowed into heaven now by sacrificing himself for Isabel. Say, I love the uh, the middle finger over the shoulder as mm-hmm. he's being pulled into heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just like, man. <laughs> uh, gotcha, bitch. Yeah, it was great. It was. Um, Satan ain't having it. He reaches in and pulls the cancer out of John's lungs and heals his wrists, telling John that he knows his soul belongs in hell, and if he lives, he'll get himself damned again. John wakes up on the floor, able to breathe properly for the first time in years. And And his wristlets are healed, too. Yes. Yes. Angela wakes up, and uh, Gabriel is in the pool, now human. But with wing stubs. And a whole bunch of those like um, uh, medical bracelets you get in the hospital. Oh, yeah, yeah, what was with the medical bracelets? She had, like, We're six, not to the question uh, part four. of the... Oh, okay. Thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, why? Yeah. That fashion? I don't know. <clears throat> she, she keeps having yeah. to check herself in. I, see, I saw this in a music video. Yeah. She's all, uh, my back, I slipped at work. She <laughs> doesn't have... She doesn't have scissors to cut him off. <laughs> if you're not related to anyone in the hospital, you cannot be here past visiting hours. <laughs> Don't give me that. Check shirt. me in. I have six big bracelets. <laughs> Look at me. I brought them with me. I, I bought a box on eBay. Um, <laughs> she, she urges. Uh, yeah. So she urges John to kill her, but he doesn't. Gabriel is pleased. He chose the higher path. Then he and Angela leave. He, uh, John punches. Gabriel in the face instead of <laughs> yeah. shooting him, her. Um, but the look on Tilda's face was amazing. Yes. Like, yeah, I truly believe that this was the first time she felt pain. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, buy it. So well, she's she's gonna have to like get a job or something now. She's human. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like reverse I, transmutations of bitch. What? Yeah, what is <laughs> that's she, on her coffee cup? <laughs> But <laughs> Mondays. <laughs> yeah, and then real. as they're walking away, Gabriel still thinks he she's one. She's just like she's like You can see? say they, Al. <laughs> they? Yeah, I don't know. They. Because that's plural. I don't know. I don't know how to do these pronouns. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. You know, uh, Gabe still thinks Gabe's one. Uh she says, You chose the higher path. Look how well you're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right off the bat. The cheering See? was so great. Yeah. yeah. You're already doing so good. <laughs> uh, uh, so sometime later, Constantine and Angela decide to meet on a roof. Because <laughs> that's where people meet. <laughs> on yeah. roofs. Um, they could have met at the doorway to the building of that roof and like gone and got caught. They could have met at somebody's apartment. They could have met at a Denny's. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Like, no, let's meet on the roof. 
Yeah, I hope one person is early, or else the two of them are riding the elevator to go. Yeah, to the do you have a service key for the top of the elevator door? <laughs> right. How are you getting up there? Well, so do you want to talk? No, just wait till we get up there. <laughs> we have to do it on the roof as we're looking out over the city. Yeah, don't tell me shit right now. Um, he gives her the spear of destiny, telling her to hide it somewhere. Even he can't find it. They withstand. Yeah, yeah. They withstand their lukewarm sexual chemistry. She leaves, and John chews some gum. Roll credits. The gum chewing reminds beat. me of you, Thoreau. What's that? <laughs> the immediate, <laughs> the immediate gum chewing. Oh, I was like, that's Thoreau right there in a nutshell. <laughs> I am now, yeah, I'm now seven and a half years of being a gum addict instead of a cigarette addict. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I worked for a short while with Thoreau, and at every moment. Chewing gum right now. He's chewing gum. I am. You're chewing gum right I'm now. Chewing, He's been gum, chewing now. gum the whole show. It's yeah. incredible. Look at you go. Proud of you. It's yeah. It's the only thing that keeps me from smoking and probably heroin. Um. <laughs> <laughs> gum it is. <laughs> it was going to be one or the other. So <laughs> make mine a double scoop. <laughs> um. Then we get a pro- post credit sequence. Yes, we do. Uh, John visits Chaz's grave. Chaz bursts forth from it with angel wings and flies away. Yep. Uh, Is that John... a real? I missed the post credit sequence of Shia LaBeouf becoming an angel. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Are you true. Fucking kidding me? Yeah. I'm going to no, rewatch Constantine, the end of this movie. He puts his uh, Zippo, his like his, really ornate, beautiful Zippo on his giant, grave. Giant, giant Zippo. It is very big. <laughs> and then... Um, <laughs> then he's walking away and he hears the flapping of wings and yeah. I'm and Shy looks kind of not menacing exactly, but it's just he kind doesn't of a strange look, look. He doesn't look good. Like he's like, yeah, he's not like happy. The he's not like, angels are terrifying, you guys. Anytime we see them like blonde hair, blue eyed, like Greek statues, it is yeah. not what they look like. As You're right. The Bible. Well, I, I like are. I like the old I love the old best. like like engravings where they're just like literal like wheels of light. Yeah, it's just like a three dimensional yeah. chariot wheel thing. Like yeah, yeah. just yeah. yeah, makes you want to shit your pants and like Ezekiel's wheel was it? Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. The flaming, yeah, <laughs> crazy stuff. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. So um, all right. So a few questions I have that were unanswered in this film. What exactly are the half breeds? Are they literal demon human half breeds? Why can that's how they explain it? They explain no, no, no. He said that way. he said I call them half breeds. He didn't say they were literal human uh, demon half breeds. So I mean, I thought he did. I mean, you're right. He says I call them, but I thought he said they were. Yeah, they were half human, half either angel or demon. No, uh, yeah, they're. Uh, I felt like they were people who were so far along in one direction or another that they were easily influenced by either angels or demons to do one thing or another. Where the rest of us are just like, I don't know, man, I'm trying to fucking work. And like, I, I don't know. know that's like, like, Gavin sure the, 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 like, the second yeah, time, the second time through, I paid attention. They did. They specifically never actually explained what they were. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, so Baltazar was a half breed. Um, yeah. Supposedly. And then gypsies, tramps, and thieves. We hear from the people. <laughs> the dude that was in the uh, um, the liquor store, like the the liquor store owner that was uh, kneeling over the body of Father yeah. Hennessy, he was like an, an angel half breed. Yeah, because they showed his wings. Yes. Um, right. So I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I thought Balthazar was an actual demon, though. See, yeah. yeah. See, no, yeah, he had demon so powder, <laughs> but he was a half breed. So yeah. they're not. Yeah, there's. They never explained it. Yeah, he calls him a half breed on their first meeting. Yeah, yeah. when he's introduced. So sounds. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I think I'm still with with what Al said. They're half human and half the other. But so it's like Zeus fucking a goose. I mean, kind that's of thing. that's Which fine. That makes sense. Lot. But they very yeah. much didn't didn't say that yeah and what the half breeds could do varied greatly yeah um another question why did memon need twins what why was that a thing uh why did he need twins i don't think he needed twins he just needed a psychic 
I think the sister um, that they, died they, was not the powerful psychic that he was looking for. Well, no, the, I think he baited uh, the living sister, Angela, right? Yeah. I think he baited her with the other sister's suicide. Because they said something about it, like it being like he needed, he needed like the like something about the mother and like uh, and they were like oh that's why that like there was something in there that made no sense whatsoever it's mm. yeah it seemed like somebody mentioned the twinness yeah constantine did but i thought it came up again there was something about mm. them being twins for a purpose for my mom because yeah once he realized they were twins constantine gave it like great pause and was like twins yeah. he was oh like, twins you didn't Shit. tell me you were twins kind yeah. of thing yeah it's like, damn, your sister's dead. Damn, that would have been hot. <laughs> <laughs> Twins. Yes. Twins. Two, gr- two mean, chicks at one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I had that kind of money, Peter. Righteous. Yeah. Um, so if someone builds a new building on Earth, does it just pop up on hell or do they have to build that? And then they tear it down. <laughs> yeah. And, like, yeah, we'll and then tear it half building. down. Yeah, yeah why does hell that? look like uh, the the vi- the dream sequence in Terminator 2? Yeah, it did. Well, why does it look like California two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah seriously. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, oh, man. Um, and my final question, what country is Manuel from? I Mexico. thought it was supposed to be Mexico. I assumed at first it was Mexico, but then I thought Nazis, Argentina. Yeah. Um, well, no, but before they were in hiding, the Germans went to Mexico very early on and, and yeah. set up. That's why oh. most Mexican beer is a Pilsner. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and what was the, the letter, the Zapruder letter or whatever? Or not Zapruder letter, the. Uh, well, <laughs> he was like, Zapruder hey, film. I'm going to film no, There was a, there was a letter that was written yeah. early in the war. That went to Mexico where they tried to get Mexico yeah. to go against the U.S. Yeah. They, okay. Yeah. Uh, Both and, wagons and, were made in Mexico for a long, long time. Your comment about Argentina is not far off because he's so poor that he's he may not be from Mexico. He may very well be an immigrant from another country who did not make it out of Mexico because mm-hmm. that happens. People get stuck in Mexico trying to yeah, make for it sure. out of the United States. Yeah. Especially yeah. in the early 2000s, that was definitely like it, kind of similar to 2016, I would say, or 2018 in the, the, uh, yeah, it, the cultural either. dialogue about immigration and stuff. Yeah. They may have been trying to make a point. Yeah, poorly. absolutely. Um, that's all my questions. You guys have any un- unanswered questions? The fucking <laughs> bracelets, man. What's with the <laughs> yeah? It's just all the there. Swinton. <laughs> it's like what? I got IBS. I'm in here a lot. Okay, and <laughs> Angela talks to demons and angels, and she's psychic, right? She's like a she can she can commune with all kinds of other shit. Well, she's, after her bath, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, anytime she gets in the bathtub, she is at risk of like talking to the other side of the she veil. She said she had that power as a kid. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and so and then she she lost that power because she kept denying it. Yeah, right. But, but then she's suddenly so incredulous. Is that what you're going to say? I'm but sorry. no, well, she got it after taking a bath. But Constantine gave her the <laughs> spear, and like she has those thoughts rolling around in her head, like, oh yeah, oh. I hit the spear that one time behind like a Seven Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and some demons like, oh shit, she hid that thing behind a Seven Eleven. Let's go get that. Like, yeah, she does not seem like the safest person no. to give that spear to. No, he should give that spear to somebody who knows nothing about any sort of evil thing. Yeah, he should have buried mm. it with Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, <laughs> or or you said dig to God a hole for Shia LaBeouf, like, and then you dig ten feet more. Yeah, like, yeah, for real, bury it underneath him because no one's going to dig him up. He's, he's, he'll be there for. Uh, I, um, I, I I digress or, or I disagree. A lot of you, people you think that like at out. the end they would have been like, "Hey God and Lou, can you guys do something about this? Because I'm not going to be responsible for this God, shit again. That, I'm so tired from this whole ordeal. Right? Like, God owns an apartment building. Lou's the hapless maintenance man. <laughs> <laughs> God and Lou. Well, and you uh, know, you know, at this point, John Constantine is just like, I ran up such a big credit card bill because I thought I was about to die of cancer. Yeah, for real. It's like, oh fuck, man. Like those. I haven't the- paid my taxes. <laughs> like, Damn, my demon taxes. <laughs> So obviously he couldn't give the spear to God or Lou. Uh huh. Um, I don't know because I would. 
so random. I guess maybe that's not so obvious. You yeah. can just give it to God. He's like, I'm choosing a side. They killed Here, your son God. with this. Like, I, that's uh, maybe here, right? maybe that, that's why God Jesus. doesn't want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah God, it, it makes it. Well, yeah, give it, it to Jesus. Sad. He'll put it on his mantelpiece. That's a great story uh, starter. <laughs> like, want, a great know, way to pick up chicks. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see something seen my cool? Spear of the Romans poked me with this thing. <laughs> God, it would kill me. Check it out. It's, it's still sharp. Heart, right? Jesus is all, poking. what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. <laughs> Here, drink this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All yeah. Right. Uh, so, all right. Um, For all you Constantines out there. <laughs> you Constantinis. <laughs> Constantini boppers. Got a fan yeah. club. Oh, my God. That's twisted. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you guys ready to put this on the great big list? Yeah, I say we put the Penguin movie on here instead. I heard that was great. <laughs> March of the Penguin. March of the Penguins? <laughs> let's, let's, yeah, let's put March of the Penguins so wherever right. we're going to put Constantine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mar- Mar- the okay. um, so I'm kind of looking I'm I'm looking around the area like so in the teens here the to- the higher teens we've got Blade 2, Mystery Men, The Mask, The Rocketeer, Dark Man, Teenage Turtles. Uh, I feel like it's kind of it should be a teen. I mean, it's got teen in the title. Constantine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where'd we um, put Blade? Where's the first Blade movie? Oh, first Blade's at number nine. It's way up nine. there. Where is Blade 2? Blade 2 is at 16. Uh, 16. I, I think this going. is better than Blade 2, personally. I was okay. surprised at how good this was. But I don't know. If it didn't have better than well. Mystery Men or The Rocketeer or Dark Man. I, I'd I, be happy in between Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Dark Man. Okay, yeah, that, I think it's better than Dark Man, definitely. I would say I'm above that. Um, all right, Al. Um, huh. <clears throat> uh, gosh, so I'm, <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm staring at uh, Mystery Man in the mask. <laughs> Wondering why we even put them on. Hey, man, <laughs> we have sun masks. <laughs> what I've done next, with my life. So. <laughs> So get ready. That's going to take a bunch of stuff over, I'm sure. That's got to be a great film. Well, once again, wherever Al would like to put it, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no sarcasm. Hashtag no sarcasm. Um, gosh. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's still right around there. Um, I don't... I loved Mystery Men. Me too. I don't want to put it above that. Um... I mean, maybe, maybe just below the mask. So between the mask and the is, rocketeer, is, is uh, it better than the rocketeer? I yeah, uh, kind of. I don't. The I don't casting know. in this movie is incredible. Tilda Swinton is yeah. incredible. The rest of the cast is fine, <laughs> except for except for Keanu. Keanu is also. Well, like he's always actor. Keanu. He's he's yeah. he's a very charming, likable actor in whatever he's in, even if he's terribly miscast. I just think that. I just think with like Alan Moore and Garth Ennis and yeah. Neil Gaiman and the, like the richness of these characters, even if the movie didn't play into it as much as the comics, you got more there than the Rocketeer. Even though we've talked yeah. about how we like the stylization and production of the Rocketeer, this is more of a comic book movie. Well, yeah, yeah, this is more of a comic book movie. Absolutely, I think the Rocketeer was a better crafted film, and and I would like to uh, cite precedence here. The uh, soldier, <laughs> the swamp versus... thing, <laughs> the swamp <laughs> thing precedent. The soldier demon versus New Jersey. <laughs> yes, exactly. The swamp. Do you believe the ruling was in favor of the swamp thing precedent? <laughs> <laughs> it's not better than no. It's not better than the swamp thing. No. Um, okay. How about how about we put it in between the mask and the Rocketeer? It's done. All right. Do it. Yeah. There we go. Constantine going in between the mask and the Rocketeer at number 19 on our list of All right. superhero You movies. let us know, folks. Was that a good choice? <laughs> the answer is I always... think it was because it still landed in the teens. That's yeah. true. Yes. And I, I give it four Swinton Hospital bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> Out of six? Out of Swinton Hospital six bracelets. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to to talk about the bracelets one last time. Clearly, is ga- clear, clearly Gabriel was insane. So, yes. uh, has, 
has been to the hospital many Raven's times. Raven's car, yes. Raven's car, yeah. There. You're absolutely right. Let's yeah. end it on that note. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. That's it. Um, all right. So, he was crazy. It was all a dream. <laughs> that closes the door on Constantine. Next week, we will be watching Son of the Mask. <laughs> And don't forget, folks, we're going to have a special Nightmare on Elm Street 3. That's right. Nightmare on Elm Street 3 will be coming up in a few weeks here. And uh, that will be available only at patreon.com slash harmless entertainment. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Harmless Phosphorescence. This has been Thoreau Smiley reminding you that Satan is a viable alternative to chemotherapy. (laughs) I'm Josh Cece, and there's a lot of unusual soul traffic here tonight. I'm Brian Lesh, and I forgot to tell you guys, I met this chick named Angela, and she gave me this fucking sweet spear. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm Alaric Weber, and I'm wearing a $200 shirt, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got robbed. I can see his shirt. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody. Bye. All right. Thanks, guys.